Hi, that's Sergey. I'm happy to say that RustCast is back and in this episode I'm going to cover the Rust module system. So first, what is the motivation for modules and what kind of problems do they help us to solve? Just like in many other languages, there are at least two major use cases for modules. First one is modules help us to maintain structured code base, so we don't write everything in a single huge source file. Second one is encapsulation. Let's say if we develop a library, we want to separate our public API from implementation details. Okay, what is a module? Well, I will not give you a scientific definition, but I guess we can think about it as a named bunch of some items. And the items can be functions, types, traits, other modules, or maybe something else. A good analogy could be a directory in the file system. The only purpose it serves is to help us to organize files in a better way. A directory can contain files as well as other directories. In a similar way, modules contain function types, traits, and also other modules. So, how do we define a module in Rust? When I was preparing for this video, I realized that there are actually three ways to define a module in Rust. That is probably what makes it a little bit complicated for the beginners. Let's split it down. The first way is to use mod keyword to declare and define a module right in the same source file. In this example, we define module foo that contains private function bar. As you may know, in Rust everything is private by default, so bar function is private here. The second way is to create a file with a module name. In this example we have same module foo with bar function, but now it's located in a dedicated foo file. However, we still need to declare the module in main file to let Rust know that this module exists. And the last way to define a module is to create a directory with a module name and mod file within. Let's take a look at this example. It's very similar to the previous one, but now our module implementation is located within mod.rs file, which is placed in foo directory. And foo is the name of the module. At this point you may start asking yourself, oh my god! Why do we need three different ways just to create a module? I don't know exact answer, but I personally find it very practical. Usually I start with a module within the same file where the rest of my code is, and as it grows I move it into a dedicated module file. And if it grows further, to the point where I see I want to create submodules, I just rename the file to mod.rs and move it into a dedicated directory. So, this is quite handy. Let's talk a little bit about visibility and privacy. In Rust everything is private by default, except few minor exceptions that I will not cover here. Private means that items can be accessed only from the module where they are defined or from descendant modules. And in order to make something public, we have to use pub. No, not this pub where you drink beers with your friends. Sorry, it's a bad joke. Nobody drinks beers. It's 2020, Corona lockdown. Anyway, we talk about the pub keyword. When something is defined as public, it can be accessed from anywhere where the host module is accessible. Let's take a look at the example. Here module foo is private, but it's accessible from the main function because it's defined on the same level as the main function. So foo and main are siblings. Because foo is accessible from the main and bar function is public, we can reach bar function from the main. For 99% of use cases, this must be probably enough. However, pub has more advanced syntax and I just want you to be aware of it. With pub crate you can make items visible as public only within the current crate. So it can be useful if you develop a library. Pub self is pretty much useless because private items are already accessible from the same. 
more do. Bob Super allows you to expose an item to the parent module and Bob with a given path allows you to expose an item to another very specific namespace. So far we've discussed how we create modules, now let's take a look at how we can use something from a module. The most straightforward way is to specify a full path to a specific items. However, in practice it can be very verbose and quickly becomes annoying. More practical way is to import items with the use keyword. In this example we import hash map from the standard library collections and then refer to it by just writing hash map. There can be situations where we need to import multiple items from the same module. We can do it by importing each item individually, but again, it looks like we repeat ourselves. Fortunately, Rust has a special syntax that allows us to do it in a shorter and nicer way. If the original item names are too long or the names clash with other already existing items, it's possible to rename items on import with the S keyword. In this example, we import binary heap as bh and use bh further in the code. Finally, we can also import everything from a module using asterisk. However, it's considered to be a bad practice. The only exception to this is importing from prelude module. Prelude module is a Rust idiom. The idea that some libraries may provide prelude modules which contain everything required to get started quickly with the library. For example, this is documentation for Chrono and Chrono has prelude module. This way we can quickly get some types and uh, traits that are required to work with the library. The last thing I want to talk about is re-exports. We do re-export by simply combining pub and use together. Consider this example. It's a little bit artificial, but we have family module which contains child module parents and within parents module we have call mom and call dad functions. Then next line we do re-export call mom and call dad functions from parent module into family. So in the main function we actually can access call mom function like it's within family module and not within parent module. Actually parent module is private so it will not be even accessible from the main function. Now let's do some coding and see how it all works in practice. So I have here a little hello world program. On the left side you can serve my file tree and uh, below you can see the result of the program when it's running. So I'll start by creating a little hello function. And I will move this print into the hello function and I will call hello from main. Now let's create our first module. I'll give it name greeting. And I will move this hello function into the newly created module. So now our program fails because uh, we moved our function, in, hello function, into greeting. So now we need to use the path to access this function. And this too fails because now uh, hello function is private. So because it within module and we have to make it public to be able to use it. Now it works. Now let's uh, import import this hello function into the current context. I use written hello here and now I can use 
I can call hello function by simply typing hello. Ooh, it's interesting to know that in Rust you can actually do imports that will be that will have effect only within specific function. So this also work works and uh, but now this import is limited only to main function. So if we'll have other functions here, like no. Like this one, for example, we will not be able to call hello. So this one, of course, doesn't work. Now let's see how we can rename imports. And uh, as I, as you know already, we can use s keyword for this. So I can rename hello to hi and call hi here. And let's say if we have multiple functions, uh, I create another hello function. What's up? So we can do multiple import here. And call hello and hello alt from the main. And you see it works as we expect it to work. And we also can do renames like this. Okay, now let's say we want to move uh, let this greeting module into its own file. So I create greeting.rs file. I open it in new tab. I pasted the implementation of greeting module, but now we don't need this mod greeting here because Rust knows that it's everything that within greeting.rs is related to this module. So we remove this module wrapper. At the moment, uh, it doesn't work because we need actually to declare this greeting module. So just to give a hint to us that this module exists. And now it works as before. Let's say your project grows and uh, we came to the point where we decided that, hey, uh, we want to have other modules in greeting, I don't know. Maybe German greetings, something like this. Make it public. And uh, you may want also to move this German greeting into its own file. So for this, first we need to move greeting module into its own directory. For this, I create greeting directory. And I move this greeting file into greeting directory and rename it, rename it to mod.rs. So far our code works, so we haven't bro broken anything. At this point, this uh, German model is uh, private, so I'm not able to, to call it here, to use it here. But when I 
make it public, it should work. Yeah, you see, hello here. So let's uh, move our German module in, in its own file. I create German.rs. So it, it's very similar. It's the same as we did with the greeting at the very beginning, but now we kind of extract submodule. And I take this German module, paste it here. But now I have to declare this German module in greetings. Again, I have to declare it as a public module. And it still works. Now let's do some uh, re export. So let's say I want to re export uh, German hello into written module. And now here I can also use this German hello. So we defined German module here and we we export hello function from this German module as German underscore hello. And that's why we can access it from greetings and using the main function. Basically, that's all what I wanted to share with you about modules. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know down below in the comments.